This video is about manual wheelchairs. Now, two points to make before we even start. Number one, the health authority may well provide you with a manual wheelchair. This means that you get the chair free of charge and you get all the maintenance free of charge. Not that there's going to be a great deal, but before you buy one, it is worth talking to your GP. If you have the permanent need for a manual wheelchair, you may be able to get one for free. Point two, I know it's only a basic manual wheelchair, but we still recommend that you look at some form of third party insurance. It should cost you about £30 a year, but if you do catch someone's heels as you're, walk, as you're driving along, um, the, the amount of money that you could incur in costs could be phenomenal. So it's well worth having, never mind protecting the chair. Okay, manual wheelchairs divide into four main types. The first type being the transit chair. Now this is a chair with small wheels at the back, designed to be pushed rather than for the person in it to push. This particular chair is lightweight, not particularly smart looking, but adequate enough. And one important feature is it has brakes that are operated by the person that's actually pushing you. Now this might seem a trivial thing, but by the time that you've stopped for the tenth time of the day and the person has bent down to put normal brakes on, on each side, they're going to start getting a bit fed up with it. With this chair, they just push down on the handles, the brakes are on. But also, if the chair is being pushed along and you're going down a hill, and to my mind, going down a hill is worse than going up a hill, when you're going downhill, there's always this fear that the chair is going to run away. The brakes can be applied much as you would with a push bike to slow the chair down and give the chair, and more importantly, the person behind, some stability. So I like the attendant operated brakes. As you can see though, the person in the chair can't take the brakes off or put them on, so it's entirely designed for the attendant. This is a basic lightweight chair. You can see there's quite a height difference between the armrest and the seat, which would probably require a cushion. The person sitting in the chair should always be in a neutral position. This means that when they're sitting in the chair, their arms should neither be pushed up, but they should be supported. So this chair would need some form of cushioning, but nothing too special because it's designed for someone to be pushed around with occasionally. That's the transit chair. The next chair is the self-propelling chair, self-explanatory, the person can propel it himself. Now, same thing, this particular chair, whilst it has brakes that the person can operate, it does also have brakes at the back, which means it serves to do both purposes. If the person in the chair has some mobility and they may want to manoeuvre themselves around, they can do so, they can also put the brakes on, but if they need help being pushed, this is still available. Now, again, quite a lightweight chair. Also, with this particular chair, you can adjust the length of the seat canvas to allow for someone with a shorter leg at the top of the leg or a longer one. Women usually have quite a long femur, and it's very important to use as much of the seat to support the person as is possible, so that the pressure areas are reduced. This seat adjusts, although with this particular chair, it's, it's very much what I would call a commodity chair. Almost one size, one colour, like it or leave it. Very little in the way of adjustment, although certain minor things. Um, it's designed for someone who's going to use the chair occasionally, not for someone who's going to be in the chair all day. If a person's going to be spending all day in a chair, you need a prescriptive chair. A prescriptive chair is going to cost about twice the price of this but is adjustable in, for example, angle of the back, length of the seat, and the whole chair can be built, heights, everything, to suit that person. And it's important when they're in it for a long time that they get exactly the correct seating and exactly the correct positioning. An important thing with a chair is, if you're dealing with somebody who is an amputee, the wheels must be set further back because the centre of gravity would be in the wrong place. It's a very easy trap to fall into that you just buy a chair off the shelf, 
put an amputee in, the next thing you know, they've fallen over backwards. Little things like that. Whilst a manual wheelchair might seem simple, it is still worth taking professional advice on it. So, we've had the transit, we've had the self-propelling. The next chair is possibly for someone who is spending time in a home. This is the comfort chair. As you can see, good seating, good backrest, headrest, big soft arm pads, very long adjustable leg rests, all built in. And one of the other very important features is this chair will tilt in space. We've seen the tilt in space on the electric chair, this one does the same thing on the manual chair. It is designed for somebody who perhaps has got up in the morning, put into the chair and perhaps spend some time in a day room, or someone who's not going to be moving around a great deal. So that's the comfort chair. Again, very prescriptive, very expensive, but well worth it in that the person will be in a good position all day without any risk. The fourth of our chairs would be something for the active user. Now usually with this chair, the frame is solid, the chair doesn't fold, it's a very rigid construction, every bit of power the person puts into the hand rim is, made, is put into pushing the chair along. No distortion, nothing going on, cut back to a bare minimum, um, no foot rests, just a bar, Armrests very low, sometimes not at all, backrest very low as well to allow the person plenty of movement and freedom. It is designed for someone very, very active. However, this chair has another little device that may be of interest. It has a battery pack on the back and it has motors in the hubs. And when you operate the hand rim, it actually makes the motors work. So if someone has limited strength but still wants to have that lightweight looking chair, this particular device will do that. As you push the chair, the motor takes over and does all the work. Limited range, but great for just buzzing around in. In fact, the later version of this can even be controlled from your mobile phone. So you can park the chair up and then send it away. And charging of it is done just by magnets on the end of the wheels. You just plug a magnet with a wire on, rather like a stethoscope, and that charges. OK, so that covers the four basic types. If you're getting anything other than the basic commodity chair to take granny out or something like that, then it is worth getting good professional advice and looking around. One of the most difficult ones is there is a power pack that will go on the back of an ordinary chair. Now the power pack sounds a great idea, um, but the problem is not the use of the power pack, it's the fitting of it. It's designed for perhaps, or it appears to be designed for perhaps where you've got someone who's not very strong and can't push the chair, for the person in it. It's designed to do that work and it pushes the chair along very well. It does however have limited braking when you're going down a hill, particularly in wet conditions. And also if you have to fold the chair up and put it in the back of the car, the fitting of the unit under the chair is really a case of kneeling down at the back and assembling it. So whilst it sounds a good idea and for some people it's going to be a brilliant solution, do look at it carefully. It is not the panacea for having an electric wheelchair. It doesn't solve that problem. Don't think you can buy a manual chair, add the power pack and you've got an electric wheelchair for half the price. You haven't. You've got something very different uh, and a lot of people buy them thinking they're a good idea and then reject them within a few weeks. Okay, so that covers the manual chairs.